Welcome to the third video in building a real-time uh, MMO, browser-based MMO. Um, in this video, we're going to go over Bootstrap and how it works and how you can kind of kind of style our website first a little bit, kind of understand that, so that way we can move on to the funner stuff like building maps and the HTML5 side of it. But we need to get this stuff out of the way first. And, and actually, Bootstrap is, is really fun. It's really easy to use, and it can really help your development. So I would definitely recommend it, and it's good to go over it real quick. The one thing I want to say, though, is that I might have, um, in the last video, I may have downloaded the wrong version for you guys to use. It's a version you can still use, but I, it, some of the, depending on what you use, you're not going to get the functionality. So make sure you go to getbootstrap.com slash 2.3.2. And the easiest way to get to it is if you just type in bootstrap in Google and you go to the docs, the, one of the very first links right here, because when you download it, and you open it up, you're actually going to, the only thing you should have is these three files. So you go to CSS, all you need is the bootstrap.min.css, and then out of the JS, all you need is that bootstrap.min. Make sure to get those two and um, and bring those over. So otherwise you're going to you're gonna be missing spans and things like that. So that's my bad, I, I grabbed the wrong version, but if, if you have issues, which I think most of you did actually grab the right version, but if you do have issues, make sure to grab the right version. Um, so with that said, downloaded, replace your files, you should be good to go. And just to kind of show you how Bootstrap works real quick, um, let's uh, first thing we need to do is we need to remove the the Hall's Node style style issues that we're going to have with Bootstrap. We don't need basically we don't need any of this stuff right here, the float, the size, anything, because we're going to use spans to kind of define that for us. We can leave the borders though. So I'm going to get rid of all this. The only thing I'm going to leave is borders. So I'm going to save that, and uh, let me get rid of this width and height right here, and we will save, and we'll worry about cleaning it up a little bit later. So that was in our style.css, which is in our main file. Open up your index.html, and now let's start working with Bootstrap. So the neat thing about Bootstrap, let's center the page first. So all we got to do is we do div class equals container. And basically, that's going to define everything in between our that div right there as a container. And what that will do is that will automatically center our page for us. Now, it made everything else a little funky, which we're going to fix here shortly. Um, but it did center it for us. So the next thing we want to do, and the reason why I made it funky is because we removed the floats and things like that. But we can fix that. So if we go down below our container, we can start with a div class equals row and it's easier if I show this to you than try to explain it right off so let's create a row because think of think of the way Twitter bootstrap works as a um, Excel spreadsheet that type or an, even an HTML table almost but it's not as ugly and it's, it's a little more advanced than that so I want the, the first row to pretty much encapsulate everything except for the actual chat box where we type in so I'm going to end that row right there and I'm going to create a new row right here that is going to encapsulate the um, encapsulate the chat box so if we come down here and we can put it somewhere in here I'm gonna clean it up later but for right now we're just gonna get this done um, so if we go ahead and just look at that real quick you'll see that not a whole lot changed because they were already in kind of their own rows but we can still fix that we can still kind of so now we what we need to do is we need to, uh, to kind of turn it into a table so how to do that Every row has 12 spans. Each span can be can be grow, grown to any any individual amount of spans as long as it equals 12. So once again, it's easier if I explain it to you. If you do a div class equals span, and if you happen to be using anything with IntelliSense and you don't see span pop up, it's because you're using the wrong CSS and you need to grab that, that other CSS. Um, to be honest with you, that's the first time I've ever seen two different downloads for it, so that's why I got confused, but just grab the other one that's at that 2.0.2 or whatever it is and you'll be fine. So I'm going to make this a span, the first one a span of, let's do span of 6 and 6, that way we equal 12. So we will make just our player list and then we want to make our we want to do the same thing with our chat window and we're going to end that div right there and I know this is really ugly you just have to bear with me as far as the code we can refresh and you'll now see that and it looks ugly right now we're gonna fix it I promise you but you'll now see that um, it 
it put each thing in a span, a total span of six. Now, you could actually, um, there is a way to, to make this bigger than just what's showing right here, but we're going to talk about that here in a minute. But the nice thing is, is it um, it's going to fit, um, you know, depending on the window, it's it's going to center it and make it nice and pretty. I just happen to have a widescreen, so it, it's, it's got a lot of space over here. Um, so if we come in here and just kind of say something real quick, you notice that it put this list here and this list here. It automatically sized the row as far as the the height to whatever it set it and we can also once again change that here shortly by setting the height of that row but I wanted to show you how kinda how this works now if you notice we didn't set a span here so it automatically put it at 12 now so let's say we want a distance between these two let's say we don't need players online to be so big so let's go back and let's change this span to a let's do a, a 4 now there is other ways of doing this, but I'm going to show you the simplistic way first so you understand it, and then we'll worry about the a little more different way to do it before. So now we have a span of 10. We have two in between, so let's say we want to space these two. So we can come in here and we can do a span of 2. And what that will do is, is that will make this span of 4, this a span of 2, and this will span of 6. And so it will be, and let me just show it to make it a little easier to understand. If you notice... We have a span of two, which we don't even need that big. We have the span of six, and then we have the span of two that separates it. You can actually do an offset that you don't have to create an individual span, but we're going to eventually put a map or whatever else here, so I put that there. But as you can see, Players Online is still a little big, so let's drop it down to a span of one. And we will, oh, my bad, I did the wrong one. Or actually, let's bring this down to a two this to a 4 and then that will give us our 12 we refresh and, and now it's smaller now if you notice the border is missing on that that's because of the style sheet that I had working so we can actually remove the uh, border right none border left none kind of clean that up a little bit so we can see it a little better and you'll see how it's spacing it out we can actually come in here to the player list do a height of let's do 400 pixels save that refresh and we now have back to here so if you notice that's still the same size so it, the rows and the spans really work neatly because you can kind of you can actually nest other rows or other spans inside of you can you can actually nest multiple spans inside of rows and multi it, it works a whole lot of different ways and if you ever want to really dig into it you can just go to the actual Twitter bootstrap and look at the examples of how the way it nests and we'll go ahead and go there now just so I can kind of explain a little bit um, of how that works uh, if you go to scaffolding up here and you can kind of see how you have your 12 span or the, how it breaks it up to nine this is actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's actually nine spans. So, but you can actually use the offset to kind of offset things a little bit. You can nest inside of different columns, rows, and uh, columns. So you can see here how they have a row inside of a row that causes that nesting. Um, here's your 12 span right here. So it, it's really neat on the multiple things that you can do with it, and it's just simplistic. That's what I like about it. You don't have to build a table. You don't have to have multiple divs of different types and set the floats and everything else to make things happen. It's just there. It's just so simple. So that's why I use it, and that's why I like it a lot. Um, so now we kind of have that set up. We do need to go ahead and just to just kind of make it look a little prettier, we're going to go ahead and copy this height and put it in our chat window save that and we'll go over here and refresh so now we have our chat window uh, a lot bigger and if we go ahead and type and say and if you notice it with the the twitter bootstrap it it went ahead and added this little um this little shadowing and things like that which we can we can do a lot more later on and um we have this open space that we left which we're going to put a, a nice little map in there but this this still looks kind of ugly and until we actually do something with it i don't i don't want to do a whole lot of work on it um, until we actually decide okay this is where, where we want to go where but I did want to at least explain how the Twitter bootstrap is going to work as far as our the way we're setting everything up and and so when I start actually we start actually doing more code on that you guys understand how this stuff flows and how it works but trust me there's a ton more of the bootstrap stuff that we will be using that will make your life a ton easier but I did want to get that out of the way 
Um, with that said, I believe we've covered everything on Bootstrap that I wanted to cover right now. The next video, we're going to work on a map system using HTML5 and the Mongo database. Um, originally, I had and I've already been asked this a couple times about, well, why did you use WAMP if you're already using Node.js? Because um, Node.js does have a web server inherently. It is a web server inherently. Um, and the reason why is, is because originally I'd wanted to do PHP, Ajax, a PHP and Ajax. But then I thought, you know what, I've already done tutorials on that. Let's do some Mongo database and do some uh, JSON and, and JavaScript so we can kind of learn that. So we're going to go in that direction with that, and that'll be in the next videos.